adamant voicing your opinion on always wanting to be a starter, and now you might be a big piece in the Mets potentially reaching the playoffs. Do you feel that responsibility on your shoulders? Is that something that you think about, um, just kind of putting more pressure on yourself? Uh, no, I, I don't. I don't like thinking like that. It's, I don't think that's a healthy way to approach it. Um, I think the biggest thing is to know what it takes for me to have success and to execute pitches and to uh, have a game plan. And um, I'm, I've been really uh, focused on that in between starts as, as far as what I want to do with the lineup and what I have to do physically in between starts to be able to execute pitches on a regular basis. And then just kind of what do you think is the missing piece that this team needs to reach the playoffs? Well, um, if we can do what we did tonight, you know, we, we were playing hard. We were, you know, taking bags and, um, you know, picking each other up. Uh, you know, um, I think uh, we played all around good baseball tonight. Um, I think uh, it was a good team win. The whole team contributed today and, uh, you know, it showed on the scoreboard. Next question comes from Tony DeComo. I just uh, Louis was talking the other day about you know the importance of the starting rotation going deeper into games. And now that you are stretched out, where you can conceivably throw a hundred pitches next time out, I mean, how much responsibility do you feel now as a member of the rotation to be that guy who can every fifth day kind of consistently take the team into the middle later innings? Well, uh, I mean, initially my first thought is that sounds like fun. You know, that's that's what I like doing, and um, I'm excited for it. Uh, you know. Uh, I, I know the process of building up midseason. I've, I've tried it in the past, and um, I'm really looking forward to getting a, a full length start. And that's I'm excited for it. Thank you. Next question comes from Jake Sina. Hey, Seth, I just wanted to ask you. Hoskins got to you for the, the home run in the first inning, and he came back and struck him out in the next two times he came up. Those, you know, facing a guy two, three times through. That's obviously the difference starting versus uh, being in the bullpen. Here's you can kind of talk me through uh, what you thought happened in the first at bat, what kind of adjustments you made, kind of how how matchup with him specifically kind of played out tonight. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, the, the pitch he hit out, it was, it was four-seam fastball, and I got off the side of it, and it just kind of leaked middle. Um, it didn't have that good life to it, and um, it was as simple as that. I knew it as soon as it came out of my hand that it wasn't a good fastball. So uh, it was easy to brush off and go right at it next time up. Seth, thank you for your time this evening. All right, thanks. Andres, um, before the game, Louis said that, you know, at least right now, they're, they're going to ride the hot hand with you. Um, what have the conversations been like? What is your understanding about what your level of playing time is going to be here moving forward? Antes del juego, Luis dijo que uh, ellos van a seguir con, con la mano caliente y ese es tú. Um, ¿qué, ¿Qué conversaciones tú tuviste con, con ellos para ver cuándo tú ibas a jugar? No, yo creo que con respecto a eso no, no se ha conversado nada. Yo solamente estoy tratando de aprovechar mi oportunidad. Eh, como siempre digo, aprovechar la oportunidad y ayudar al equipo lo máximo que pueda. Um, in, in regards to that, we haven't had any conversations. That, um, like I've said before, I'm just trying to take advantage of every opportunity that I get, and, and, and that's, what, that's what, fortunately, I've been able to do. Speaking of taking advantage of opportunities, I know it's difficult sometimes to reflect mid-season, but... You know, at the beginning of the season, I'm sure you didn't have any expectations about necessarily playing in the major leagues or at least not having a major role. And to now, you know, be counted upon in a home stretch of a year where the team's trying to make the playoffs. Um, you know, what does that mean to you? And have you been able to think about how far you've come in, in a short period of time? I'm just saying that now you have a role that you're playing more frequently. And in March, you didn't think that you were playing. No, it, feel, it feels really good. Um, it feels really good to be able to help the team win because at, at the end of the day, that's, that's, what, uh, that's what's most important. And it, it's, also, it's also big. It, it feels really good to be able to, um, to be able to try to achieve the same goal that we all have. Your next question comes from Justin Toscano. Hey, Andres, you guys played a pretty clean game and, and had a really a, a team win tonight. How confident are you that you guys can put that together more consistently over the final games? Uh, 
seguir con algo así? Hasta... No, yo creo que la confianza siempre la he tenido en mí y en el equipo, que podemos hacer las cosas de esta manera y creo que la confianza es la misma. Nosotros somos profesionales, venimos al parque a hacer lo mejor de nosotros y los resultados van a estar ahí. No, I have the same confidence in myself and, and in the team that, that we'll be able to continue playing the same way. But at the end of the day, we're all professionals and, and, and that's what we do. We come to the ballpark to, to, to play good games. And for you, what's been the most part of the, what's been the biggest part of trying to stay consistent in pretty much every facet of your game so early on in your career? Y para ti, ¿qué es la parte más grande para quedarte lo más consistente posible? No, yo creo que, que la rutina, la rutina te da la consistencia, hacer las cosas todos los días eh, te da la, la consistencia. Um, I think I think it's the routine. Uh, the routine for me has been what what's helped me uh, keep my consistency in all in all aspects of the game. Thank you. Next question is from Tony DeComo. Hey, Andres. Uh, what did you think Seth Lugo did particularly well tonight on the mound? No, yo creo que él hizo todo muy bien. Sabemos lo que lo que él puede hacer, lo que él es capaz. Y bueno, como dijeron, ya esto fue una victoria en equipo. Creo que cada quien puso de su parte. El, no, I, I think he did. I think he did everything well. We expect him to, to to do that every single time he's on the mound. But like I said before, and uh, this 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 was a good team win. I think uh, the uh, Lugo did well. I think the uh, the relief pitchers did well. Uh, the bats the bats came came and played, and uh, it was it was just a good team win. Thank you. Next question comes from Disha Thoza. How helpful is it in your development and your consistency to play on back-to-back -back games like this? What would they tell you that you can play back-to-back? No, I think no. I all the days in the park that I come, I come with the same mentality of playing, of helping the team in what they can. And I think that's a great part of coming to play every day, to be ready to play every day, and to help the team. Um, I think for me, it's uh, I, I come in with the same preparation every day, where, where I'm where I'm gonna expect uh, to be in the game to play. So, so it doesn't matter what situation. I think that's a big important part to be able to help the team win is to be prepared each and every day. Andres, thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Guys. Your first question comes from Steve Gelbs. Hey Louis, um, what made Matt so effective? I'm sorry, what made Lugo so effective tonight? Well, uh, entire repertoire usage uh, today. I think it's the the day that he's used his curveball the most. Uh, can I, that, since I can recall, that we started stretching him out and uh, he had it in. He was trying for a strike. He was trying for chase. Um, you know, so entire repertoire sinker. He also threw his four seam when he needed, you know, some of that carry uh, uh, two strikes up in the zone. And he threw some really, he makes some really good ciders. So entire repertoire. Um, tempo was kind of a little slow at some point, I thought, but you know, he he made he made some pitches. Um, you know, he got some strikeouts. Uh, he did did a good job. What does it say about him that you know, on a night like tonight, where at least early on it didn't seem like he had his best command, he was still able to to get through five, limit the damage to one run, and and tie a career high with eight strikeouts. It, it's tough. I mean, stuff. He's tough plays. Um, you know, he, he features that that fastball, four seam, the sinker. You know, those are those are two um, plus pitches that he has, and then the the curveball. I mean, we all know uh, the effectiveness of his curveball, and then he commands those two. Now he's got a changeup, uh, he's got a slider. Those those pitches play. So he, repertoire is always going to help him, despite not having you know the command that he desires uh, at all times. So he can he can get a chase. I think when when he. When he presents the curveball for a strike, he can get chases out of that. When he when he starts expanding, um, and then he can also create create a tunnel with his with his force him up up in the zone to a ball in the zone, and uh, that's some of the things that he did tonight. Louis, with uh, 81 pitches tonight, five innings, do you now consider him fully stretched out moving forward? He's he's there. I mean, he's he's close. Uh, you know, we'll definitely talk in between between starts, see how he, his routine goes, and uh, we. Me and uh, Jeremy Hefner, we can talk about next outing, see if he's, you know, there. He did a great job, and, you know, he, he, felt, he felt great uh, uh, post-outing. Next question comes from Mike Kuma. 
given, given the challenge that the starting rotation has become, how satisfied are you with this decision to transform Lugo into a starter? Well, today, uh, you know, the first time he, he can, you know, he's given us, he's gotten to the fifth inning, even a five innings uh, to, to pass the ball to the bullpen from there on. I mean, uh, you know, right now it's, it's a great position that he's there and, you know, he's fully stretched out. We just, we just started talking about his repertoire. We were, we were praising it that, you know, it's something that he can get away with and have a solely a quality start like this one, even though he doesn't have the, the command uh, that you would, that you desire him to have the whole time. So, you know, he pitched today, he used his pitches. Um, he was able to get through, through the, to their lineup a few times with that and, you know, the five innings. So, yeah, I mean it's uh, it's great that he's at this point now, and then you know the rest of the the rest of the guys are, um, you know, at that point with him with him as well, and then we can we can keep we can keep rolling and competing hard. We know what the games that we have left. And how about just as far as knowing? I, I take it he's somebody you, you look at as dependable that you're throwing out there every fifth day, where there, as there might be some other question marks. The what? I'm sorry. Is he some? Is he somebody you look at as dependable and sending out there every fifth day? Here, where you're juggling some other question marks at the back of the rotation? No, uh, Seth. No, I mean he's uh, he'll be all right. I mean every 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 fifth day he'll be he'll be just fine. I mean he'll recover just great and he'll give us what, what we ask him. And um, you know I think he's building build up really good. Like I said, he felt really good post outing. So. Um, you know, he's, it's it's been a it's been a job well done. I think uh, to get into this point where he can where he can give us those five innings, and now maybe in the next start, maybe more. Next question comes from Justin Toscano. Louis, you guys have had a couple messy performances, but you've had a, some clean ones too, like this. When you have one like tonight, what specifically clicks that's different from some of the others? Uh, well, I mean, tonight it's it's you know I know we have some short outings uh, out of our out of our starters and uh, it's something that definitely exposed our bullpen a little bit and uh, guys you know guys that battled uh, back there just to come in and actually pull some wins out of those uh, games where we ask guys to go multiple innings so um, you know it's definitely a good thing right now that we're you know the guys are getting to that fifth inning sixth inning you know we had six yesterday from um, for Porcello we got five today from. From Lugo and some guys can can get that extra day of rest and be, and be fresher and fresher. So if we keep we keep uh, sequencing that, you know, where, where we get quality quality starts uh, and length like that from our starters, I think our, our bullpens, you know, can finish strong in the 20 games that we have left. And um, on the 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 sack fly that Frazier scored on, is that a play where he sees Walker going back instead of Harper coming in to catch the ball, and then you guys send him? Is that instinct or is that I, I think he's both, and you know, you also gotta gotta take in consideration Tony Tony D who's at third base as well. You know, he he gives him the direction. I mean, Todd is a better player. I'm sure he's reading the ball and he's seeing who's gonna make the catch. And as he as he sees Todd making the catch back pedaling, uh, he knows the momentum is difficult to really, um, you know, just just get back into a throwing position and make a make a firm throw to the play. So it was a good heads up play. I thought you know both made a good call about. Uh, watching the play and seeing if who's going to make the catch and who's going to give him the best chance to score there. Thank you. Next question comes from Rich Catino. Louis, um, Seth was working with a new catcher tonight, t tonight, and usually in an off season, if that happened, he'd have a whole spring training to work with him, but they seem to be on the same page, not a lot of shake-offs, and Seth seemed to think they worked really well together. What was your view of it? Uh, we're talking about Chirinos and Seth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes, they, they. So that that's that's been one of uh, uh, Robinson Chirinos' uh, mission missions since he joined us. I mean, he's just gone to everyone and trying to get to know them. Uh, you know, as a teammate, also, uh, you know, as the catcher of you know every every single pitcher here in the staff. And uh, I, th I think he's done a good job in only, only a few days. And today was was kind of like that day as well. Uh, with with Seth, I mean him and uh, him and uh, Seth were were meeting since early in the clubhouse. They were they were chatting. They were talking. They had um, different conversations about what their plan was and what Seth likes to do. So I, I thought they did a good job just uh, syncing in, you know, with each other. Uh, you know, you, you played out on the field. I mean, you could you could tell that there was a game plan there, and there were some adjustments they needed to make. They made him. Uh, so you know, 
Robinson's shown that ability ever since he uh, he we, we acquired. I mean, not even not even uh, he didn't have to be present uh, here physically when when we noticed that. You know, when we had that conversation on Monday night and uh, when the trade happened, he you can you can sense that personality and that willingness to do that uh, off of him. So he was ready to come here and start start the process of getting to know everyone. Thank you. Next question comes from Tony DeComo. Hey, Louie, I'm just uh, curious what goes through your mind as an opposing manager when you see one of their best players get ejected midway through the game like that? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the game. Uh, you know, I didn't, didn't agree with the call. I haven't seen replay or anything about, uh, you know, all of it. Um, and, you know, it just, things got escalated next inning, you know, as he was taking his position. So, you know, some things that, that are not new in the game, you know, it's uh, some of the emotions that, that are in the in the game of play. I mean, you you definitely want uh, you want to win. You know, you want you want things to go your way, and and you know some emotions lead to to arguments and escalating, and that's you know probably led to to the uh, um, to the ejection at the time. So it's, it's things that happen in this game. Thank you. Next question comes from Joel Sherman. Louis, is your intentions to start Jimenez? at shortstop again tomorrow and continue to run him out as your regular shortstop? We, we will see. We will see tomorrow, Joel. I mean, we're at this point, we're, we just want to put the best team out there each day. Um, and, and, you know, today we felt pretty comfortable with the guys that we had uh, and, and the rotation that we can have, you know, with the, with the infielders. Right now, I haven't, haven't set my lineup up for tomorrow. Um, you know, I will, I will regroup, I will talk to my coaches, I will present a few lineups that we do sometimes, a few models. Uh, Jimenez had an unbelievable game uh, tonight. He played so good. Uh, you know, Robinson Chirinos played really good too, and he cut a, a call a really, really good game. Um, you know, but still, no, no, nothing, no lineup has been written. So, you know, that was something I'll be, I'll be uh, sharing tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, Luis.